All right. Hi. I'm a little bit nervous, so in the beginning I'm going to go a little bit fast, and then as I get calmer, I'll slow down when we get to the, to the, to the content. <laughs> but um, So um, welcome today. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Aubrey Dodge. I'm, I'm the co-director of the Building Bridges ABA program. Um, I, sorry, my screen and that thing don't match, but that's okay. Um, so um, once upon a time, I was a psychology student at Eastern Michigan University, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I grew up, because I loved kids and I love psychology, but I am very sensitive. And so I thought, if I work with kids who are traumatized, I'll cry every single day. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then in the hallway at Eastern Michigan University, I saw, oh, I'm going to try to use this now, this picture right there. Um, and I will call him Johnny, and it said, help me learn to talk. And it said, I, this was 20 years ago, and it said, I have autism, and I had no idea what that was. And it said, ABA training is provided, also had no idea what that was. Um, it said, I have a brother and a sister and two dogs. And I was like, that sounds amazing, sign me up. So I got to the house, and um, I'm an older sister, and I've been babysitting my whole life. So I took my resume, and I gave it to mom, and then she said, this is Johnny, and he was in the kitchen. So I got down on my knees, like a good babysitter does, um, to be on the same level with the child. And I have learned that from my babysitter club books in, you know, 1987 or whatever. <laughs> and so then he came in and gave me a hug, and um, I hugged him, and I looked up at his mom, and she had tears in her eyes. And I didn't understand. Um, but then I quickly found out that... Um, he uh, sort of was in his own world at the time, and he only said the word door when I met him, and he had banged about 300 times in three hours when I first met him. Um, but so fast forward many years later, after a long time of doing ABA with him and then transferring him to a different BCBA because he was my best friend. Um, and here, if anybody, I'll give you points if you can tell us who we are in the bottom left corner dressed up for Halloween. Um, but this is obviously the bottom right corner is um, graduating from high school. The top right corner is us at the special needs prom called A Night to Shine. He requested that I dress up like Belle, so I did, and it was fun. Um, in the bottom middle, that's he, we taught him work skills, vocational skills at Building Bridges. And then um, he got a job, created his own job at Building Bridges, which benefited Building Bridges. He started our recycling company, and he received a paycheck once he learned all of his work skills. And then he was unable to, um, he mastered that. Um, and then he was unable to maintain transportation. And so this is his retirement photo um, with Brad Neighborhouse, the owner of Building Bridges. Anyone figure out who we were in the bottom left? Aw, the Powerpuff Girls. He requested six months ahead of time that we dress up like a Powerpuff Girl. So that's Brad in the back dressed up as Professor Utonium. And that's me and the um, two of his old direct line therapists. And that's him dressed up as Mojo Jojo. And I could not, not, whoops. See, me and technology. <laughs> I had to add this one really quick. This was a couple weeks ago, the ARC's Ball for All. Um, he um, found this cat in the hat um, hat in the photo booth stuff and wore it all night, and that's him um, engaging in conversation with some of the patrons, and he bought me that beautiful corsage because he was my date, and then we were dancing, and he said, let's dip. We danced all night. It was so much fun. Hi, everybody. My name is Tiffany Kubiziak. I am a um, BCBA, also at Building Bridges with, with Aubrey. A um, little bit about me, um, I was a Montessori teacher for preschool and kindergarten students for about 16 years um, before I made the career change, the big career change, over to a BCBA. Um, I loved my time in the classroom and I, I miss it on most days, not quite COVID time days, but I do, I do miss teaching. But I found that when I was in the classroom, I didn't get to meet all of my students on an individual level. I had all of these kiddos coming to me um, with a variety of, of needs. Um, whatever they may be, and I wasn't able to, to help. It seemed as though the, the particular school that I was at, the time that I had spent um, with some, some people that I taught with, there was more emphasis on what my bulletin board looked like versus, hey, I, I got this child to smile today, or you know, they, they came into my classroom without tears, and they made a friend, and, and we had fun, and they wanted to come back the next day. That was what was important to me, and not, do I have all of these pictures up on the bulletin board? Do I have, was I able to you know, check these boxes and, and whatnot? So I needed to change. Um, I had actually met Aubrey through my classroom, um, and I had told her, you know, I, I think I need something different. I, I need to, to make a difference and feel happy and proud about what I'm doing every single day. Um, and she told me, well, you want to be a BCBA. I was like, oh, okay, sure, that sounds great. I look up to you, I admire you, I'll, I'll be a BCBA. Um, I kid you not, I had to go to my computer directly after that conversation and look up, what on earth is a BCBA? I had never heard that before, but then I fell in love with the field. Um, I have a master's in, um, in Montessori philosophy. I also have a master's in special education with my credentials to, to sit for the board's exam, so my credentials in, in ABA. 
Um, so why am I here? Like I said, I want to make a difference and I want to be proud of what I was doing. And I get to, with full confidence, say that I am proud of what I do every single day. I love my job, sometimes a little too much that I don't turn off as much as I probably should. But, um, but I'm very happy with what I'm doing. That's the humble side of that story. The other side of that story is I watched her being a teacher and said, oh my gosh, you're really amazing. You should be a BCBA. <laughs> Um, so um, first I want to talk about what is applied behavior analysis. So behavior analysis is the science of learning. It's the science of behavior that identifies the relationships between someone's behavior and the environment. That's the behavior analysis part. The applied part is and works to make meaningful changes in their life. And when I say meaningful, I mean meaningful to you based on your values for your child, meaningful to your child. Um, it's, um, we know that we can, um, cultural humility is foundational here. We know that we can never know enough and that every family has their own culture. So conversations with families, which are focused on culture and family values, guide our individualized treatment goals and procedures. Ooh. Sorry, I was supposed to be pushing that button. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I apologize. I'm so bad at technology and it makes me very nervous. Okay. So, science evolves over time because of research and changes in social norms and culture. So, for example, cancer treatments, physical therapy exercises, speech pathology, psychology, they've all changed over time because research was done to improve their effectiveness, social validity, and efficiency. And the same is true with ABA. Research is constantly being done in the field of ABA to continue to improve in those areas. Listening to individuals with autism and their families is an important part of building and maintaining a good ABA program. In building our ABA program at Building Bridges, I attended the OTCOM conference, and that's something they haven't had in, in some time, but it was a conference by people with autism for people with autism. And I had the honor and the pleasure and, um, to listen to them, um, I'm sorry, to listen to their experiences, both good and bad, in therapy, and I built our program based on the wisdom that was shared by those individuals. We focus on continuous improvement and learning at Building Bridges, so we do things like Professional Development Day once a month, where we invite um, experts in other fields, um, as well as we have a parent panel, a sibling panel, and we, um, at least once a year we have an individual with autism come and talk to us. And we ask them about what it's like to have autism, to have autism in your family, as well as what it's like to experience ABA therapy. Um, the BCBAs also participate in a journal club every month to ensure that we're always learning and that today's excellent is tomorrow's great, because that's how we roll at Building Bridges and that's how it's always been. It isn't new, so this here, oh my goodness, this here is Dr. Greg Hanley. He is a researcher in ABA, and he recently um, published what I like to call a guiding light essay in ABA, um, and he calls that today's ABA. We were very excited to read about this updated research, and we're pleased to see that most of what he talks about, we've already been doing at Building Bridges. So we have always said that the child should enjoy the therapy or we aren't doing it right. The essay gave permission to talk about ABA in a not so scientific way, which is very exciting for us. We've always felt we're a science, we have to speak like scientists and that it's not very much fun. Um, so it gave us permission to talk in a not so scientific way and the research provides more evidence-based ways to make sure that our clients are enjoying their therapy. So what does ABA do? In my opinion, it changes the world. So we get to decrease barriers for people. We get to increase access for them, teach skills, we get to give people a voice, build relationships, and create connections. And when we can do that with our clients with autism, they can change the world. So skills that we work on, some important skills to teach and learn. So communicating wants and needs, social communication, communicating for the removal or for refusal, to dissent. Leisure skills, exposure, one of my favorite quotes is that exposure breeds preference. Um, we want to build on their preference, preferences. The goal is to increase the number of things they enjoy doing and their access to those things. We also want to prepare them for work, work that makes them happy and makes them money. Johnny enjoyed his job at Building Bridges so much and seeing his face light up when he came to work every day dressed up with his shirt tucked in and his belt on, that was a dream come true for me. Um, we want to help them build the skills needed to get a job that makes them happy and to maintain that. 
daily living skills. So things like very typical things that are challenges for families, getting up in the morning and getting out the door or going to bed at night um, and tooth brushing. Um, choosing, so social. So choosing, making, and being able to decide about who you wanna be friends with and how to identify bullying and how to handle that. Community, so being able to go to church or to the grocery store or out to dinner with the family. Being able to attend sibling sporting events or to go on an enjoyable and restful vacation. Health, so being able to go to the doctor or dentist to get a checkup or a cleaning without being pepoosed or sedated. Showering and dressing self, themselves, identifying changes in their body and reporting them to an appropriate safe person. Safety, so things like stranger danger, what to do if you see a gun, and consent in relationships. Tolerating, so things like waiting in line, when you can't get what you want immediately, when something is broken, or having to go to the dentist or to get a haircut. We're gonna talk a lot about dentists today, not my favorite thing. How many people love to go to the dentist? Oh, look at you, good job. Uh, the run else in here is tolerating it. Um, cooperating, oh wait, flexibility in play, in language, and all the way up to psychological flexibility, which is responding to the stories in your head in a way that's healthy and reduces suffering. And I can tell you that I wish I had learned that before my 30s, and I, I'm so excited to be able to teach that to, to children. Cooperating, so cooperating with others, participating in activities with others, managing the expectations of the environment. So anyone who doesn't have the core four, so those are the ones that are starred, communication, leisure, cooperation, and toleration, their life is more stressful than it needs to be and their family's life is more stressful than it needs to be. And so we want to teach those four skills to decrease the stress in a family's life. We want to break barriers. Our job, we get to break barriers. Barriers to inclusion, to relationships, to health, and to meaningful work. Autism itself is not stressful. It's the barriers that cause the stress. So, increasing access. Personal development and self-determination are incredibly important. Our goal is to help our clients create the meaningful life that they want. The ability to choose and to refuse. To know what the choices are is what's required. In order to be able to choose and to refuse, you have to know what the choices are. You have to know the consequences of those choices and to have the ability to gain access to those things. So we're talking about just making choices in everyday life, things to do, places to be, people to be with, with whom you might live. Recreation is vital to maintain a quality of life. And that's activities that you engage in for the primary purpose to enjoy and be satisfied. And we want our clients to have as many of those as possible. In terms of social participation and inter interpersonal relationships, for example, we want to help them create a life with opportunities to meet new people and to make choices about that for themselves. We also work in the areas of emotional, physical, and material well-being the ability to stay healthy and safe on their own terms. So for example, us in this room, we choose when to stay up late, when to have an alcoholic drink, when to have another piece of cheesecake. We know the consequences of that. We know, um, um, and we have the self-determination de self to choose for ourselves. It's important that we teach these skills to our clients. They will not always be children, and they shouldn't be treated that way their entire life. Independence is incredibly important, and I don't just mean with things like toothbrushing, but with building their dreams and embarking on their own journeys. So one of my favorite things about the Hanley um, Guiding Light essay is that he talks about today's therapy theme, today's ABA therapy theme, and it just gives us a perspective to walk into the room, and we always sort of felt this way, but to be able to tell everyone, this is our therapy theme, and so therapists, this is what you go into this room thinking about. I see you, I hear you, I understand you, and I'm here for you. That's what we're doing in ABA. Our goal is for our clients to feel that that's what we do for them when we get there, where we see them, we hear them, we understand them, and we're there for them. Today's ABA allows us, it's, we get to change some of the wor words that we use to better reflect what we do, so we don't have to talk so scientific all the time. We're finally talking about how ABA is relationship building, connection-based, child-centered, and play-focused. And Tiffany's gonna talk some more about that with you today. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about teamwork. 
Um, from the moment that ABA begins with initial interviews, meetings, assessments, observations, conversations, program writing, all ABA staff members and family members operate as a team, a unit. Over time, it becomes a cohesive, well-oiled machine. There are definitely some bumps along the journey, but all of those bumps are just learning opportunities for success and growth. Teamwork makes the dream work. Parents, caregivers, siblings, they are all the experts. They have everyday wisdom of what is fun, what is loved, what this individual will go to again and again and again and again. They have a pretty good understanding of what works at home in their real life and what does not. Most importantly, they know what brings the joy. They know how to get those little giggles that make even the worst days shine just a little bit brighter. Let's talk about keys to the kingdom. This team mindset is just like having keys to the kingdom. If you had all of this power, wisdom, and knowledge, why would you not access it as frequently as possible? Today's ABA also focuses on cohesive, collaborative relationships based on values. Aubrey spoke previously about um, ABA being values-based. Those values are your values. Through collaboration, open lines of communication, and a solid foundation of that teamwork mindset, your values and evidence-based practices that ABA brings to the table can be cohesively brought together to form effective programming for families. Our teamwork framework is something very special at Building Bridges. As a parent, the last thing I want to do is to be left in the dark when it comes to the journey of the success of my child and having them reach their full potential. Rather than being along from the ride and watching from the back seat, I really want to be a co-pilot. Today's ABA takes that same approach. I'd like to take a moment to reflect and remember today's ABA theme that Aubrey just discussed. I see you, I hear you, I understand you, and I am here for you. This theme and this mantra needs to be repeated over and over and over again while building this team of warriors. This working collaborative relationship with families is vital for success in today's ABA. <clears throat> families have the opportunity and are encouraged to meet with the whole team of individuals that surround their child with love and light. These individuals include, but are not limited to, the BCBA, the direct line therapist, so any therapist working directly with your child, speech pathologists, occupational therapists, educators, physical therapists, medical professionals, and psychologists. We are not only working to empower the individuals, but empower families as advocates. We want to give you a voice and let that voice be heard. As I always tell my daughter, sing it loud and proud. In addition to collaboration meetings, we meet with families for hands-on training. We want to help you achieve your value-based goals and work together with you to make sure that ABA programming is effective and functional in your everyday life. Again, I see you, I hear you, I understand you, and I am here for you. Yep, perfect. I'm also not tech savvy. Um, collaboration is the key to our success. So think of it as it takes a village in that mindset. However, in this instance, the village consists of individuals who have studied, researched, and for the most part, reached master level criterion in their respective fields. Going back to the discussion we just had from the previous slide, the family, they are the expert on this particular child and they are a key player in collaboration. Establishing a collaborative relationship with other professionals and therapies ensures the best outcomes for our clients. When we work together, we make a much bigger difference. Multidisciplinary collaborative relationships should be developed and maintained across all fields that work with children with autism. So who are the players? Well, you may be familiar with some of the more familiar faces in an ABA team. So we go back to the BCBA, the occupational therapist, uh, speech language pathologist, and physical therapists. However, medical professionals are also very important within this collaborative relationship as well. So dietitians, pediatricians, psychologists, developmental, clinical, and counseling, um, general practitioners, nurses, the list goes on. Some less thought of professionals um, that the BCBA may collaborate with, but we do so quite frequently, are social workers, special education teachers, classroom teachers, and paraprofessionals. Solid multiple dis disciplinary, excuse me, collaboration can ensure rich, developmentally appropriate goals based on family values while avoiding those conflicting duplicate goals. 
one of the many benefits of hold-based ABA therapy is that we can take all of these beautifully appropriate goals and use them um, to model teaching techniques for families. We help them get engaged through strong relationships with their children, all while strengthening these skills in their home environment. When I was a Montessori teacher, I used to have parents tell me all the time how frustrating it was that I could get their children to engage in a variety of activities in the classroom and they weren't seeing this at home. So things like washing their hands, cleaning up dishes after a snack or, or lunch, cleaning the floor after a spill, making a friend, in, initiating those social, um, those social opportunities and that communication. Sometimes some of them even went as far as um, well, what would Miss Tiffany say? And I'm gonna call Miss Tiffany, or don't make me call Miss Tiffany, which was a big no-no. I did not want to be used as a threat. Um, I didn't know it back then because of the environment that I was in, but based on this research and based on everything that we do consistently through ABA, I'm supposed to be bringing the joy. I'm not the bad guy um, or the chaos creator, most importantly. Knowing what I know now about the value of collaborative relationships and the ability to take all of the concepts of a child's learning journey and bleed them into all environments, so home, the classroom, the playground, athletics, social gatherings, I wish I would have been able to join them in their homes, all part of my rationale for that career change. An improvement of quality, the efficacy of service, services across all disciplines, so going back to OT, PT, speech, and the opportunity to optimize success is also significantly impacted through multidisciplinary collaboration. Parents, you are the advocates for your collaboration with your child. If this is not already happening already, you have every right to request this collaboration to benefit your child's services. So how can we achieve this? This all sounds great on paper, but it's very tricky to do. It's so important, but it's very tricky. You may be familiar with the phrase, too many cooks in the kitchen. It's a popular thought that if multiple people are working on, together on the same thing, that the final product will be impacted negatively, and the outcome will not be a favorable one. <clears throat> However, through careful planning and mutual respect, most importantly, for all other individuals and their respective disciplines, success can be optimized. Specifically outlined roles and an understanding of the contribution of each team member will assist in creating a healthy and productive working relationship based on trust. <clears throat> Today's ABA stresses the importance of building relationships, building bridges, no pun intended. Building bridges in order to build those connections. We will dive into the connection piece a little bit more on the next slide, but it's vital to keep in mind that we must build those bridges in order to optimize the outcomes, creating joy, empowerment, and making a difference. This quote is very important, so I wanna pause for a quick moment while you read. <clears throat> ABA builds relationships with families. ABA practices can assist in building relationships with families and assist in building relationships within families, brick by brick. Two years ago, pretty much to the day, when we were staring down the barrel at COVID lockdowns and quarantines and COVID chaos, I threw myself into webinar after webinar to keep my brain busy and keep myself distracted from all the COVID happening outside the door. One specific talk that has stuck with me since that time discussed developing programming emphasizing the importance of real life, functional, relationship-based skills. The best example that was mentioned and that is always at the forefront of my mind when working with families on programming involved building and maintaining relationships within families. The best example um, emphasized that the importance should be on saying, being able to say hi to grandparents while doing a visit or a video call. Again, this was early COVID, a lot of video calls. Um, this, this emphasis on being able to say hi to grandparents should be over being able to look at a picture of a goat and say goat. I digress. If your value is to be able to identify all of your farm animals because of either a vocational skill or something, great. But again, based on your values. I heard this and knew that I had to make sure to continue creating programming collaboratively with families that were structured around building relationships within those families. ABA also builds relationships within schools. 
So as I mentioned previously, school professionals are part of this multidisciplinary collaborative team. While professionals working in the field of ABA strive to develop and maintain strong, effective relationships within schools, ABA also works to build the school relationship for that individual, so client-based school relationship. The specific components of this relationship are vital for student success, academically, socially, emotionally, and mentally. By strengthening this relationship, we can assist individuals to know how and where they can access information. Where is the library? Who can help me with this math problem? How can I do this science project? How and where they can access peer and social reinforcement? And how to make friends in the school setting? And also how to develop effective and positive relationships with other adults in the school setting. So their teachers, their paraprofessional, a counselor, principals. The most important notion to keep in mind with today's ABA is that it is a client-based, client-centered program. Relationships that are most valuable, most uplifting, and that produce the most opportunities, and most importantly, bring the most joy, should be held in the highest regard. ABA is connection-based. <clears throat> ABA builds connections from our clients to other individuals, family members, peers, adults, community helpers, but it's also connection-based with the client at their core, the individual to themselves. On the last slide, I talked about building relationships within that family structure. Through our work within our ABA <clears throat> sessions, excuse me, and throughout personalized caregiver training sessions, these interpersonal connections can be developed and blossom. We not only help build connections, but we also strive to teach individuals how to access those connections. I need attention, and this is how I can access that attention. Today's ABA also focuses on building connections for that specific individual. Those connections involve the world around them based on personal learning history, past events that may or may not have impacted their growth and development on any level, reinforcers, exposure to aversive stimuli and future goals, those of the family and the individual themselves. Today's ABA, as Dr. Hanley states, is trauma-formed. Dr. Hanley stresses that at the core of today's ABA, it is to be assumed that any person exhibiting <clears throat> problem behavior or specific behavioral barriers has experienced multiple adverse events. It is vital that all ABA professionals learn through listening. We'll talk a little bit about, more about that on the next slide, but this is the most effective way to learn about any individual. Enrich therapeutic context develop and maintain that trust and that positive bond. Follow their lead, not over a cliff. Again, keep that phrasing in the back of your mind for the next slide. Fine tuning our awareness and our ability to listen to all communication bids. All behavior is a form of communication. By not being chaos creators <clears throat> in order to work individuals through noncompliance or emotional duress by empowering individuals and giving them a form of communication, even if that communication is through their behavior, that will be respected and honored. By making individual performance-based decisions, and most importantly, teaching from joy. Play, play is my passion. There is a tremendous amount of learning, processing, communication, movement, and joy happening when a child plays. Play can vary. Play can look like an elaborate restaurant scene with a kitchen, a chef, a sous chef, a waiter or a waitress, a customer, and an abundance of communication back and forth. However, play can also look like one child arranging their cars <clears throat> in the same color order time and time again in a meticulous manner. No matter what the play looks like, there's a process and some learning being done. There is some level of intrinsic joy when a child plays. Aubrey spoke a little bit and, and made mention of exposure breeds preference. We can do this through play. I see you playing with these cars. Look at, I also have these trucks that you may be interested in. I may also have this bus. I also may have this garbage truck. Building that exposure. Aubrey's going to discuss our goal of creating joy shortly. However, one thing to keep in mind is that accessing a child's individual unique form of play is an excellent way to create joy. This first quote 
is very important. So I'm going to read it to you. Scientists have recently determined that it takes approximately 400 repetitions to create a new synapse in the brain, unless it is done with play, in which case it only takes 10 to 20 repetitions. Play is huge. When I was spending time in the Montessori classroom and learning the Montessori philosophy, um, they spoke a lot on one of the core um, components of our philosophy is everything is done through manipulatives. So you teach hands-on everything. To this day, I promise if I learned math this way growing up, I would not have my love-hate relationship with math. It makes sense. But when you do things through your hands and you learn through your hands and hands-on, so play, you are bypassing that short-term memory and you're heading into long-term memory. Concepts are more salient when they're learned through play. Play is beneficial for all age groups, infancy through adulthood. In addition to unique preferences and capabilities, lending themselves to the structure of play, play looks differently to each, in accordance to each age group. It can help in assisting with um, relieving stress, can stimulate the mind and boost creativity, helps develop and improve social skills. It's linked with emotional and behavioral benefits. It can also assist with a variety of sensory needs. Research has also shown that play improves relationships and your connection to others. Let me say that again. Play improves your relationship and connections with others. Does it sound familiar from one of the previous slides? In addition to social relationships with peers, it assists in developing a healthy parent-child relationship. Some other things that play can um, assist in development and enhance. It can assist with creativity, productivity, flexibility, which Aubrey spoke about before, optimism, empathy, social altruism, cooperation, and problem solving. Today's ABA follows these guidelines. We learn by listening. It is imperative that we start having conversations, and most importantly, start by listening. We all have this beautiful research behind what we do, but we need to start by listening. Remember that team, the parents are the experts, the families are the experts part I spoke of? We need to start by listening. Conversations can lead us to what is reinforcing, what play looks like, what brings the joy. Conversations can provide information about what communication looks like and how to best communicate through all aspects, play being one of them. Dr. Hanley instructs that today's ABA starts with asking questions, listening, and learning about people by people. Some examples of learning through listening through play. By gaining all this imperative information from others, we can begin to play their way. Today's ABA is not about how I play or how society says that we should play, but it's how this individual plays. How can we enter their world through play? We learn by creating joy. Because like I mentioned, Aubrey's gonna talk a little bit more about this in the moment. And while this is the crucial first step of today's ABA, I want to wait to dive into that a little bit more with her. However, it's imperative to express that ABA brings the joy. It creates happiness. It breaks down those barriers and provides access. The aim of ABA is never to enter an individual's world and create chaos just so we can work through it. We will not be the chaos inducers. We are the joy accessors. If I'm working with a child, I should never be taking all of these fun things away in order to create a situation where they have to earn them back. That creates chaos, not joy. I want to give them access to play items and use them to enter their world. Teach communication, toleration, relinquishing, mindful of not removing all the joy accessors, of course, and transitioning. We are using these play items to teach that back and forth play, social skills, emotional regulation, socio-dramatic play, just to name a few. Learn by empowering. One of our goals in today's ABA is to emphasize these, um, to, to emphasize that we are empowering these individuals in all aspects. We want to teach them that their behavior, which is a form of communication, has merit and that it means something. It is important. We also want to teach them that they are safe with us and we use this empowerment to build trust. Sociodramatic play or role play can be very effective in assisting this process. 
social skills and communication skills can be developed and strengthened through this type of play. However, not all of our clients come to us with socio-dramatic play skills, and that's perfectly okay. We work from the ground up. We meet them on their level and we build from there. It's their world and we are just renting space. Let's look back at that child that lines cars down the hallway in their unique, meaningful way time after time. We comment, we add, we provide, and we make sure that those cars and those activities are safe. We are empowering their behavior, ensuring safety, and building trust. This can take a tremendous amount of flexibility on our part, which brings us to our next quote. However, play is unique, and we need to earn respect and trust by giving respect and trust. The last thing on here is we learn through teaching. <clears throat> Dr. Hanley instructs that play and leisure skills are one of the skills necessary for a joyous lifestyle within our families. We can teach everything through play. Academic skills, so numbers, counting, patterns, letters, preliteracy, the list goes on and on. Social skills, communication skills, self-help skills, safety skills, and vocational skills. I wanted to touch base on follow the, follow the child, but not over the cliff. This was a part of uh, the philosophy that I had learned during my time in the classroom that carries over nicely to today's ABA. We are following the child. We are following their interests, their communication, their social skills, where they're at, um, following them to a path of joy, but not over a cliff. You like to run? Great. Let's run. Here's our safe environment to run. I'm not going to run after you into the street. I'm not allowing you to run, after, run into the street because you like to run. We're following that joy through safe measures, not over a cliff. Throughout play, today's ABA is focused on our mantra. I see you. I hear you. I understand you. And I am here for you. OK, so back to um, Dr. Hanley. Um, he talks about, like I said, he talks about how how teaches us how to um, make sure that our, our kids are enjoying their therapy. Um, and so he talks about HRE. Um, so HRE is happy, relaxed, and engaged. And when you've got a client who's happy, relaxed, and engaged, that's a child-centered, play-focused therapy session. In today's ABA, we avoid transitioning to teacher-led learning when your client is not in HRE with you. So goal one, get an HRE together, have fun. And then once you're there, your client is much more likely to join you in a learning task. How about we go work on our numbers? Because you guys are all together and, and having a great time together. And research shows that, and that's so exciting. So therapist behaviors, this is what we're training our staff to do. And this exact slide is something that I used in Professional Development Day not long ago. So what I want our staff to do, as she's been saying, create the joy, bring the fun. You are the one that brings the fun. Provide access and remove barriers for this client the whole time you're with them. Empower them. Let them know that their version of communicating is effective for you. You're here for them and you are there for them. Join. Join them. Get in there with them. What are they doing? Get down on the ground. Lay down on the trampoline if that's what they're doing with them. Imitate the things that are appropriate to imitate. Um, so one time when Johnny was making a tea out of stuff, I tried to make a tea out of stuff and he gave me this dirty look and I was like, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. But then he was bouncing a ball down the stairs and I joined him on that and he was all over that and he was like, okay, I love you. So imitate, expand on that fun play. What is it they love? They love, they love um, crazy weather patterns like tornadoes. They think that's hilarious. So then add a tornado while you're playing with the cars, right? Like at, expand on their play. Comment on what they're doing in a loving, excited, fun way. Be the giver of the stuff. Be the giver. And demonstrate different fun ways of doing things and suggest and offer to help expand. So those skills right there are the behaviors that a good direct line therapist engages in and does well. So I'm not on social media, uh, very, very little on social media because I'm old. Um, but I'm aware that there are some negative things about ABA on social media. And so I wanted to sort of clear the air on some of that. Um, while um, I, So I'm aware that there are a lot of people on the internet saying bad things about ABA. And I would never take away from individuals who are sharing their negative experiences. Those are their truths. But I don't, and I'm really glad that they're sharing their truths. Because we can, we can all, the word sh world should learn from its mistakes. But I want to be sure that people understand that those horror stories do not reflect ABA in general. 
And just like there are some bad dentists, doctors, and lawyers out there, there are also bad ABA providers. But ABA is not programming that uses aversive tactics. We do not do mean things to children to teach them stuff. Um, it's not just done at a, t a table to teach colors and numbers and features and functions. That's easy to do, relatively easy to do, and so a not so good ABA provider will jump on that and do that really quick. But what does that matter if your child can't ask for what they need or what they want, or that they can't enjoy their life and have fun? Um, it's not a blanket system that can be Xerox for any two kids. Every kid on the spectrum is different. Every human is different, right? We're not creating robots or preventing kids from being themselves. We want them to be themselves. We want to express that. We want to expand that. We want them to have more of that. Um, we, are, we are not teaching them that they have to do what everyone, else, what everyone says. One of our very first goals is to teach them to say, no, I want a break. I need help. I'm not doing that. Um, ABA gives kids a voice. It increases things that make them happy and their access to things that make them happy. Some other myths that I want to bust. We believe in stimming. I'm engaging in stimming right now when I'm walking around and doing these weird things with my legs. And usually when I give this talk and I'm sitting, I'm doing this squeezing with my hands. I'm holding this, so I'm sort of like stimming on this a little bit, moving it around in my hand. If I don't have this in my hand, I'd be doing funny things. With my, I'd be engaging in stereotypy, and many of you are too. And no one should tell us that we're not allowed to do that. Um, so we, um, we want kids to feel free to be themselves. So we appreciate their personal strengths and preferences, and whatever that may be. If their preferences are sprinkler systems, or toilets, or, or um, trains, or colors, right? We go with that. Um, so let me see. We believe in stimming. We love neurodiversity. We don't make kids do things. We make them want to do things. And I don't mean by coercion. We make them want to do things by exposure to fun things, by modeling and reinforcement. We don't ignore kids. We will occasionally choose to ignore a specific behavior, like yelling during timeout, but we do not ignore kids. We teach advocating for themselves. We teach self-determination, not blind compliance. We very much care about feelings. We teach kids to express their feelings, to advocate for themselves, and, change, and for changes in their environment. We teach kids to advocate for changes in their environment. It's too loud in here. I, that, the other day I was in a classroom and this student, uh, and it's a transitional classroom, he's 21 years old or something, and he came in to have lunch and someone else started the washer and the dryer and he was like, ugh, 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 and I was like, oh, it looks like you're frustrated. And he was pointing at the dryer and so we were like, do you want to maybe move back? It sounds like it's loud. Do you want to move back to the back of the room? Ugh, 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 and we were like, okay, sounds like you want us to turn it off. We'll turn that off until you're done with lunch. Advocating for himself, not asking him to put up with that and deal with it teaching him of different ways he could handle that, and then taking it away if it's that bothersome. Um, so life comes with challenging emotions. So we also teach our clients to cope with challenging emotions in ways that work best for them. We do what's called acceptance and commitment therapy, tailored to individuals with autism with many of our clients to increase that psychological flexibility that decreases suffering. And we have all benefited from that as therapists in more ways than I have time to explain with, to you today. We empower kids to share their feelings. So our ABA is assent-based and empowering. What do I mean by that? We respond to any approach by a child, even when the approach comes with a behavior that's not ideal. So if a child approaches us with some sort of light hitting, we might say something like, um, because this is communication, we might say something like, um, I see you, it looks like you're frustrated, or it looks like you're mad, or if I know what he's needing right now, I'll say, oh, it looks like you want this pen, right? So I'm, I respond to that behavior. We teach our clients to communicate to gain access to what they need. Um, we respond to any removal of assent, so any sign of distress, by stopping what we're doing, going back, figuring out what did I do this time that was stressful for him, and doing it differently next time. And I'm going to show you some videos of this today. We teach communication for, with, for removal, withdrawal of assent, and refusal. And again, I'm going to show you that. So this is the best part. Now I'm gonna show you videos. This is the most exciting part. Okay, so ABA is life changing. If I can teach a kid to go to the dentist or to go to the doctor or to go to get his hair cut by choice and to tolerate that just like the rest of us do. Nobody loves those things. Haircut is okay, I guess I get a nervous, but vacation, to be able to go on a restful vacation, that's life changing. For, to be able to sleep in the same bed with your husband without your child and for him to be able to sleep in his own bed by choice in a comfortable way, that's life changing. 
to be able to go and, and be um, happy at school and participate in school like Tiffany was talking about or have a job that makes you happy and makes you money, that's life changing. So I wanna talk to you about um, Evan. There are a million amazing stories about this young man, and, but we're gonna focus on his dental journey today. Prior to this, Evan was traumatized at the dental office. So there are reports from his mother that, there were, that he was told ahead of time before going to the dentist, we're going to the dentist, we're just gonna get a little checkup, we'll come right back. On the way to the dentist, there was lots of crying, screaming, flailing. When they arrived at the dentist in the parking lot, it took seven dental staff to get him into the wheelchair and into the building where um, there, he then used his feet to stop from being pushed into the doors. Um, many people were bleeding after that. Um, and his, the dental office told him that the, he couldn't come back, his family couldn't come back if this was with the way that it was gonna be. Um, his mother had to hold him, and that was tra traumatizing for both him and his mother. So prior to receiving a combination of ABA, speech, and OT therapy at Building Bridges, in and in collaboration with the family, the way the world dealt with this child was traumatizing for him. Because he didn't have communication skills, he was counted out by the rest of the world, but not at Building Bridges. So, that, this day, we said, we took him to the, we got a dental chair. This is our dental chair at our office. We're so excited about it. We're changing the world. So the first time we said, hey, we're gonna go check out. We got a dentist chair. You, you don't have to sit in it. We're just gonna show it to you. You just have to, I just want you to look at it. Can we go check out the dentist chair and we'll come right back? He agreed. They went and looked at the dentist chair. He looked at it, he stayed back and looked at it like, what? So then the next time we went back and said, okay, so let's, so next time, is it okay if we just go and we're just gonna sit at the dentist chair and you can read your favorite book? There will be nothing else besides that. We won't move the chair. Nothing's gonna happen. Would you mind just sitting in the dentist chair to read your favorite book? And he agreed. So that's his first sitting in the dentist chair reading his favorite book. So now I'd like to show you. Oh, click this. All right, I'm on the wrong slide here. Okay, so um, this is a couple weeks later. So they just did the light, and then he requested for them to be all done light, and you'll hear that. I think he has to hit play. Oh, there okay, wait, play. pause, what? He has to hit play. He has to hit play. Yes, the first video. Okay, first video, thank you. <laughs> nope, nope, not that one, the, set, the yellow one, yellow shirt. Oh, no. Bad. Nice work. Good, relaxing. Nice job, dude. And back up. That was amazing. Tolerating it, right? Okay, so now we did that, and we're moving up at the dental, at the dental clinic at Building Bridges. We can move up, we can move up, but now we have to go back to the dentist where he was traumatized for going in. And so we had to step way back at the dentist office. And this is our first trip to the dentist office, just saying to him, would you mind just going and touching the door, getting back in the car? That's all you're doing. He agreed. Second video, please. Stop checking it out, Evan. Yeah. Door handle. You did it. Good job. Get me out of here. <laughs> All right. And this is a couple weeks later at our dentist office at the clinic at Building Bridges. Third video, please. Look at you. You're already ready. Okay, I'm That's gonna get huge, right? I love how you're already sitting so nicely. Up, 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 up. I love how you have your sunglasses on. Mm -hmm. Nice work. We're gonna bend back for. I'm gonna put your bib on. How are you feeling today? So happy. That's awesome. I love when you feel happy. Good work, dude. Alrighty. Let's have our body nice and calm. Let's lay our legs down. I'm going to turn on the light so I can see all the way inside your mouth. Good job. I'm going to bend your back a little bit and bring you up a little bit more so I can see you nice and clear. So there are lots of steps awesome. between first video right and third here. video here. I didn't have time to show you all of them. I'm going to take a look inside your mouth. Alrighty. Let our tools 
I mean, they look right back here. With the open <laughs> wide. See? Ah. Uh, uh, nice job. Wow, that's amazing. Let me try this side. Oh my goodness, you're so fantastic. That was so cool. I'm going to count your teeth now. Counting with a metal tool. Let's open wide. I'm going to count the top part first. One, two. Take a breath. Nice work. Let's do the bottom. Almost done. You're doing so good. Wow, that was amazing, bud. Oh, hey, hi, Vix. <laughs> Good work, dude. That was so cool. I love how you're sitting with your mouth open and a calm body. You're rocking it out, dude. Oh, amazing job. All right. Whoops. Nice oh. job keeping your head. I clicked and then all the things came on. All right. Cool. All right. Next video. This is a few weeks later. First day of string floss. That was beautiful. And now we can move more quickly. In the beginning, it's one thing at a time. This is the first wow, day of string floss, and you saw so she did one good, tooth. Ev. He handled it, and now she can do more teeth. He can go quick, more quickly through the steps because he trusts us. He knows we're not going to push him farther than he can handle, and that you, if he says stop, we will. Beautiful. Next video, back at the dentist. Lots we're more anxiety here. Under light, and we're going to open yeah. mouth. No teeth yet. Llama. Open mouth. Open mouth, that's it. Ah, good. Yeah, good, Ev. I'm gonna lean you back. <laughs> oh, you can see stuff. Well, I'll put it back. Feather. So you. see that? He showed a sign of distress. She said, say, you, you, okay, we'll stop. And then she said, you good can say stop, Ev. and he did. Didn't push past. Yeah. How do you feel right now? You feel happy, good job. All right, open mouth. Uh, good. Yeah. No, no teeth. teeth. No, no teeth. teeth. Good job, Ev. Next video, that's a toy that he loves that makes him feel calmer. A kangaroo. Look at like you, you're up. opening your mouth already for me. That was kangaroo. so cool. Kangaroo. Starts with K. I'm just going to look, then all done. <laughs> Open mouth. Oh. The kangaroo. Beautiful. Like the Evan, you're amazing. <laughs> He's like, okay, yes. that's it. That's enough. Kangaroo. That was perfect. Great job, all done. You said all done after that. Yep, we're out of here. All right. All right, so this is this week. <clears throat> so we added this week this, um, this token system or schedule so he knows exactly what's coming. And you can see that he's like, what's happening next? You can see he's very anxious at the dentist. So we're going back to the dentist. We've come really far at the clinic. Um, but we told him, these are the things that you're going to do. And it was a conversation ahead of time. And so you see at the end we wrote, what's going to happen today that's new is mom's going to come in the room. And he's traumatized. When he was traumatized, mom was in the room before. So that he has this association with her. And so that's a big step. And he's been having her stay in the lobby up until this point. So today, the next goal is just that she can come into the room. So we had a conversation with him. Here's the things we're going to do, bud. Mom's going to come into the room. You see that we wrote on there, no mom touch teeth, no dentist touch teeth. So we agreed to that. It's like our contract. And then he wrote on there, no cart. And that means the dentist cart with the tools. And we were like, OK, yep, the dental cart with the tools will not come in. Contract signed, good to go. So then we go. You can play the video now. Good job, Ev. Nice. I'm going to move this to the side right now just so we can show the fall. There we go. Nice. I hope the light's closer to you. I love how you touched it first. Nice job, buddy. Oh, that's great. Let me move your head back so that way. See how she tells him every Not step? Go Always. Good job. Look at you earning your fourth token. <laughs> nice job. Dad's doing it. All right. Mop. Yep. Number five is touch metal tools. Evan touch. Good job. Whoa. You're wow. amazing. Good job, dude. Wow. Do, do you. <laughs> you're Let's ready. get the counting going. One, two, three, four, five, I guys. I see that you're ready. All right. My turn with this one. Eight. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh, nice. That's earning token number six. All right, we're going to have seven, eight, and nine. So I'm going to count how many teeth? Eight, five. Five teeth. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh, nice. One, two, three, four, five. Good Look job. at you, Evan. At the clinic, he could do all the teeth Whoa. at one time. I'm going to count. But we step all the way back at the dental office. Next video. 
Ah, nice. One, two, three, four, five. Beautiful job. We're almost there. Five more teeth. Say ah, ah. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness, you are fantastic. We are nine tokens. Mm -hmm. We're ready for the 10 token. Mom. Mom. Yep, mom's gonna come That's in and say all done. All done. Mom, yes. All done. So you can Good job, Evan. <gasps> Let's go. All done. All done. You did it. Good. So he agreed. Did you see that? They said mom's gonna come in and he said, Mom, yes. So we're not pushing him past the point that he's comfortable. One thing at a time. But she walked in the door and he was like, Oh gosh. And you could see it and they're like, Oh, okay, all done, right? We're all done. Ah, nice. So, wow. Sorry, that happens every time. All right, so um, I, we just wanted to say um, thank you so much for coming. Does anybody have any questions? I think we have like five minutes. Yes? That, I really should have that. I really should. I will find out, and we're going to be here and through the next breakout session, and I will let you know. I knew I should have put that on here. Any other questions? Yes? Old Orchard Pediatric Dentist in Novi. Sees a lot of. That's a recommended one. Yes. Yeah. This. This. So one of the other things I do is I go. Um, the reason that we. The way we got that dentist chair is I guest lecture at the University of Michigan every year for the dental hygiene program to teach them the dental hygiene students how to work with people with autism. I'm um, to prepare them, and every year I looked at every single person in the room and said, "If you have an ever, ever have an opportunity to get me a dental chair, I need one." And eventually the teacher was like, "Stop staring down the students. I'll give you a dentist chair." <laughs> Um, so I finally got a dentist chair. Um, but it's, um, my goal is to create lots of dentists who know how to work with people with, in, with in autism, you know, and to like take these steps. Um, and dental hygienists are much more likely to be able to do it than dentists themselves. Um, and so I'm collaborating with the University of Michigan to try to create more of them in the world. Any other questions? Yeah. I think it's recorded and available for people who came. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, oh. you go ahead. Um, just that, um, that uh, with respect to what you said about how they're good ADA providers and bad ADA providers, how is a parent navigating a very contentious or struggle child? How do you differentiate? Everybody has good marketing. There should be. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Where people can go. Yeah. Oh, we had a good day. Yeah. Um, oh, he's doing great. Well, like, how do you break that down? I, I think it's important, like, like Tiffany talked a lot about, our teams include the parents. And so just, they know everything that we're doing, and they know how their child is doing on it all the time, right? So we have a monthly meeting, at least, with the whole team, so that everybody's on the same page, and the parents can see it. We're in the homes showing you what, we're, what we've mastered. So say we start with shoe tying or toileting, right? And we are the ones that break it down, we teach the hard stuff, and then we get it done and we say, look, this is done, mom and dad. Expect this from now on or else that skill will disappear, right? And so that, it should be an open conversation all of the time with your ABA provider, not just a conversation, but a let's do this together. Let, show, let me show you what they can do now so that you can expect that going forward. 
generalization is everything. So if you're just dropping your child off for ABA and they're doing all of that and then you just pick them up and they say, it's going great, that's not good enough. That's not, it's just not good enough. Um, I used to work for ABA providers where the reinforcer for the providers was a graph that said we taught lots of things and we worked like behind a magic carpet or behind a magic um, curtain and then the parent picked them up and is as, as if nothing ever happened over there. And this was when there was no insurance to pay for ABA and so parents were going bankrupt to pay for this. And so when I started our program at Building Bridges, I said, our, the owner at Building Bridges, Brad Neighborhouse, said, Aubrey, what's your dream for building a center? Let's do that. Isn't that amazing? How lucky am I, right? I get to build my dream every day. But I said, Brad, I'm nervous to start a center because when I've worked at centers, parents drop their kids off, we do all kinds of stuff, they pick them up and nothing changes for them in their real life. And I don't believe in that. It's not enough. My reinforcer is for a parent to come to me and say, we went on a relaxing vacation. I can sleep in my own bed with my husband without my child and he's happy in his own bed and it's great. Or we went and got a haircut, right? That's my reinforcer. And that doesn't happen unless you're working together. So our center-based program requires a home day. If you have a little child and we, we think they're best for the clinic, the clinic is Tuesday through Friday and we're in your home on Monday implementing the things that we did in the clinic in your home so you can see it, so that we make sure your child does that with you, so that he can respond to you. It's not enough for him to be, they always respond better to us, right? Because we're not their parents and we don't, um, we don't. There's lots of, lots of reasons. I have a kid, I can tell you that my kids with autism listen to me way better than my own child. Um, but that should not be that you don't have the ability to get your child to eat their food like we do, or that, you don't, that he doesn't ask you for things, right? Um, so, I would recommend the BACB, so you can just go to the BACB and call and ask about, a, you can even call them and a human will answer the phone and ask about good programs. Um, I recommend that you take the stuff that I told you today and you ask the people, your providers, do you do this? What is your thoughts on play-based? Do you do play-based? What, what are your thoughts on when a kid approaches you? Um, do you do, you know, take the stuff that I taught you today and ask about those things. Um, and insist that you get to be part of the program. If you're not in the Building Bridges area, this isn't just a Building Bridges advertisement. Like, we're definitely the best, but that's not what I'm saying. I want you to be able to, to discriminate between good ABA and bad ABA because um, it, it, it can be, I don't want to say dangerous, but it can be such a waste of time and so not helpful if it's not done well, right? These are the goals that should, we should be working on. If your ABA program is working on features, functions, colors, and numbers, and that's it, and they're not working on requesting things that, that your child wants, or daily living skills, or teaching them to make choices for themselves, it's not good enough. Um, time's up. Did you want to say anything? Time's up. Oh, time. Time's up. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.